Hello everyone and welcome to Stefan's Podcast, the podcast for everything Japanese news and what's going on in my little island here in Japan. I've got some great Japanese news stories for you, so let's jump straight into them. The first one is getting more and more expensive to visit Japan because unfortunately governments and restaurants and businesses want to make as much money from the tourist as possible and here are some of the new policies that they are looking at doing. The first one is in Japan in many prefectures they have Uh, city tax on hotel stays. So if you come to stay in certain cities, in Fukuoka they have it, in Tokyo they have it, and in Hokkaido they have it. In most of the, I'd say, tourist hotspots they have it, but they are looking at doing this in every single prefecture. So get ready for this if you come to Japan in the near future. So they're considering adding a city tax and every time I go to Fukuoka on every single night that I stay I have to pay an extra 200 yen per person. So every single person that comes has to pay this per night. So it's pretty expensive. So the price depends on where you go and which city you're in but I'm just looking at Fukuoka. Fukuoka at the moment. So on hotel stays under 20,000 yen you have to pay an additional 200 yen per person per night and on hotels over 20,000 yen you have to pay a whopping 500 yen per person per night which these prices add up and it just adds a little bit of frustration for me every time I go to Fukuoka and I have to pay this because sometimes depending on the hotel I have to pay this separate, separate, separately so if I've paid on card then sometimes I will get to the hotel and then they will say oh you have to pay the city tax and I have to dig around for change just to pay this it's very frustrating and it adds a cost to Fukuoka hotels which are already ridiculously expensive as it is at the moment every time I try and leave my island to go to Fukuoka I look Look at the hotel price and I go ouch I would much rather go to Korea which is much much cheaper and the next cost that is going to add up to people coming to Japan is they are looking at possibly changing the tax system to when you come here so when most people come to Japan they will be able to bring their passport and they won't have to pay tax on like clothes CDs DVDs cameras what you will do is you'll bring your passport and you won't have to pay the tax on top of it and if you're buying expensive things like expensive clothes expensive cameras this can add up this can be a big big saving but what they are looking at doing now is at the moment you go you give them your passport you get the discount bang straight away and then when you go home you're meant to declare what you've bought and they're saying most people aren't declaring this properly so they don't want to give people the discount on the stuff that they're buying and what they want you to do instead is to bring all your receipts pay the tax and then at the airport they will give you the money back in either cash or looking at doing some sort of e-transfer something like that which most people I wonder if they are going to want to go all the way through the hassle of this having to keep all their receipts and then doing this at the airport will they forget to do it maybe so this is going to add an extra cost to people coming to Japan so not particularly good the other news story for you is restaurants are looking at charging and some are already doing this unfortunately they are charging basically a higher price to foreigners than what they are charging to local residents now this happens in other countries before but the price can be a big big difference Now the sad thing about this is at the moment Japan is going through a bit of a boom at the moment. Loads of people are coming to Japan. It's reaching record high tourism at the moment. But it's getting more and more expensive to come here and I wonder if in the future more people are going to want to keep coming when they're paying all these extra taxes. They're paying higher prices for restaurants than what they would have been the last time they came they're paying higher prices for hotels than the last time they came and it's more difficult to get the tax relief on clothes shoes whatever they want to buy not good Japan I don't like it they are charging pretty much every opportunity that they get at the moment to try and charge more money out of tourists they're doing it they did it with Mount Fuji recently they've restricted the times that you can go and you have to pay I believe it's either 2,000 or 4,000 yen just to climb Mount Fuji whereas before it's free and there's a lot of these extra stuff where they're trying to charge tourists and one of the most hilarious things that I saw one restaurant that have recently put up the prices for tourists they have said the reason why they've done it is because it takes longer to serve non-native Japanese speakers so that takes more time more resources and 
costs us money. And I have just been to Tokyo. I don't speak much Japanese. I've been with my family. And I have to say, most nine out of ten of the restaurants that I've been to, they have tablets. It doesn't cost the server any more. You go, you order on the tablet, and that's that. There's no one who actually serves, serves you any more. And I have to say, that is pretty, pretty sad. My trip to Tokyo this time was actually a little bit disappointing because every restaurant that I went to, Um, nine out of ten of them had tablets that you ordered on, which I don't like doing. I like going out, I like talking to the server and getting some actual service. Also, I wanted to, my mom and dad to see my Japanese, but I didn't get to use it because there was no one to talk to. I just had to order on a tablet and that was it. The only time I got to use my Japanese was if something went wrong with the order, which was sad. Um, but not good Japan, not liking the way that it's going. I'm not liking that... It seems that they just want to make as much money from the tourists as possible and then send them home. And I wonder in the future, the yen's low at the moment, so not a giant problem. Most people come in here feel like they're getting a good deal, but all of these taxes are going to stay. And when the yen goes way back up, which I think it will do in the next couple of years, it will go maybe not to what it was originally, but it will go somewhere in between that. And it will be more and more expensive for people to come here. People will start coming here and going, oh my God, Japan is so expensive. There is no way I am coming back, which is going to be a huge problem for them in the future. These taxes definitely won't get taken away because once the government gets money, they like to keep it. And restaurants as well, once they start getting the money from the tourists, they also like to keep it. So, ugh. I don't like the way that Japan's going. I don't like the way it's cheap treating their tourists at the moment. It's not good. Don't like it. Not a fan. Not a fan at all for you. But uh, that's the sad, sad way of Japan and the way it's going at the moment. So the next news story coming for you is speaking about the government. Um, Japan's government are having problems filling their positions and they are actually having a lot of people leave the government and change jobs, leave, just quit their jobs because they're not enjoying it. And this was a surprise. So they've got what they call career track, career trap, career track Japanese bureaucrats, which means they're in these sort of positions that they are just going to go up and up and up. They're in a great position. They are maybe on the way to management. They're going to be high up in management. They're going to make a lot of money if they stay in the Japanese government. But they said recently 177 people have just decided to quit. They don't like the job. They don't like the hours. It's too much hard work. Maybe they don't like all the bureaucracy. And they've just gone, you know, I quit which is a big surprise for Japan, because in Japan, most people will stay in their company pretty much until death. They get into the company and then they just stay there. They work their way up as hard as they can. They're not like the UK where people will be changing jobs all the time or like America. In Japan, it's very, very strange for people to just change jobs. But we're starting to see more and more people swap jobs, change jobs. They don't like the hours, it's too much work, and they want a little bit of a break. And I can't blame them. Some of the Japanese companies here, they do extraordinary hours and are always working. It is madness. So how do the Japanese government fix this? Well, they're going to try and bring down the workload a little bit. That would be a nice one for the people working there. And Japanese government is full, full of bureaucracy. I can only imagine what it's like if you get, start getting higher up to the top. Maybe try and bring some of that down, start streamlining stuff, make things a lot easier. But this is not only happening in Japan for people in the jobs. Not only are they quitting the jobs that they're in, but they're finding the Japanese government is getting harder and harder to recruit people because they don't want to work for the Japanese government. Maybe because a lot of hours, a lot of bureaucracy and a lot more difficult, a lot of difficult work in the bureaucracy. I... To work for the Japanese government, I imagine, would be very, very difficult. So good job to the people who are working there. Whew, not, not for me. But next news story coming out of Japan. Oh, yes, this is an interesting one. Uh, Japan has carried out no executions for the last two years, apparently. And this has been a big news story, and they were surveying people in Japan, thinking, should they get rid of the death penalty? Should they keep the death penalty? And the Japanese people have voted to say, no, we should keep the death penalty because it's needed. It stops people committing these horrible crimes because they fear the death penalty, and that is what they're saying. They want to keep it, but it's interesting, in the last two years, not a single execution. And before, 
COVID, they were having them regularly. So we will see. Maybe this could be a phasing out of Japan's executions, but the Japanese people still want it. So what's your opinion on it? Let me know. Executions good, bad? I don't know. I'm not sure on this one if it's good or if it's bad. So next news story for you. Oh, speaking, I wonder if this man will get the death penalty. I don't think so because he's a little scamp. Uh, a student has been arrested for allegedly shooting BB gun pellets at people on a train platform in Tokyo. So apparently this man lived right next to the train platform and from his apartment he could see people walking on the platform. And he is accused of getting a BB gun and shooting people with the BB gun. Now, in the, uh, in the news story here, they asked him, well, why did you do it? What was the reason for it? And he said that he, uh, he wanted to shoot people to see their reactions. <laughs> what, why would you just shoot someone just to see their reactions? I can tell you what their reaction is going to be. It's going to be, ow, stop shooting me, that hurts. But the uh, police arrested him and found a couple of different BB guns in his apartment. In Japan, you can get these very realistic BB guns. Uh, I haven't fired them here, but they look a lot of fun. Not fun enough to go shooting people on a railway thing. What, where does he go from this? Is he going to work his way up to a paintball gun? I want to know. So he will probably be in trouble for that. He'll, I wonder, what do you think? I can't predict if he's going to get any prison time for this. Should he get prison time? It depends. If this is a first time offence, maybe not. It's a little bit mischievous. I suppose you, if you get someone in the eye, that's their eye gone, maybe a couple months in prison. Who knows? Naughty, naughty man. But apparently he's done this multiple times, according to the news report here. So not good. Not good. Very mischievous man. Let's hope he doesn't get the death penalty. It's still here in Japan, so you better be careful. They're going to head gone, chopped off, finished, taken out. So the next news story for you, uh, we have had a big thing here in Japan about the mega earthquake going on and where the fault line is at the moment, it's all sort of the south of Japan and the Japanese government uh, released a story to say that there is a higher likelihood, a higher likelihood of this mega earthquake and for people to be careful, get prepared and everything like that. I will say, trying to find the news story and just see, okay, how much more likely are we to have a mega earthquake? Doesn't say, you can't see the stats. I've tried to search for it. I can't find if it's 10% more likely, 100% more likely, 1% more likely. It's impossible to find. But because of this, a lot of hotels have been canceled all down the south of Japan because people are worried of tsunami hitting them. Uh, all the coastal areas in the south of Japan have had hotel cancellations and it is leading to a lot of problems for these small hotels and looking at the thing here they said that at least 1,000 hotels have been cancelled because of this warning that the Japanese government have put out and like I've said they haven't even said how much more likely there is if in an earthquake. Is it 1%, 100%? Uh, if you're traveling around Japan, be as cautious as you always are. You know if you come to Japan that there's a likelihood of earthquakes, tsunamis. So just be careful. I wish they said how much more likelihood it is from the news story. No one knows because they've said other, this is the problem with things like this. You ask one person, one expert, one opinion, and one more expert, another opinion, and they both disagree. So another geologist came to say that, well, we don't know when this is going to hit. Yeah, we're going to get it soon, but soon means like in the next 30, 40 years. Nobody knows, and all the government has done so far is ruined business for all these hotels. So fingers crossed, no mega earthquake in the next couple of days, and I hope these businesses do all right. Unfortunately, the government, when they try and help nine out of 10 times, don't always help. Uh, next news story is, oh, this was so sad. So, so sad. The, uh, and I can't believe that this was, this was like front page news story here in Japan. The Japan Imperial Family Rescue Cat, me, has passed away. Their family cat has unfortunately passed away. They rescued, I believe it was three or four of these rescue cats and unfortunately one of them passed away. The Japanese family was so, Japanese royal family from this were very sad and have put out a news story to say it's died. And I was just, couldn't believe this was front page news story. I know we have royal family in the UK, but 
as far as I'm aware, one of their dogs dying didn't never made, you know, front page news. It might have been in the backstory somewhere, but this was a big surprise to me. And I imagine it would be a big surprise to people who are American and don't have a royal family. So their cat died and this was big front page news in Japan. Very surprising to me. Uh, next news story coming up for you is, oh yes, Olympics. <coughs> you might have seen this, the Olympics. You might have watched some of it. I didn't get to watch as much as, it, as I normally do. I was a little bit busy this time, a little bit sick and moving house. So Japan actually came third in the Olympics. So good job to them. The UK, a little bit underperformed. We came seventh, which isn't too bad. I said UK, Great Britain as we come up on the Olympics. Um, so we didn't do too bad. We came seventh, not as good as we normally do. I believe we normally get place around fifth. So a little bit of a disappointment. I mean, in medals overall, we did very good. We came 65th, but it seems that they weight golds higher. We didn't get many golds this year, but not too bad. But you may have seen the viral breakdancing, uh, the Australian breakdancing woman who was 36 and underperformed according to everyone else. She did better than me, but she looked terrible at the breakdancing. And I've just found out that breakdancing is not going to be in the next Olympics. And it looks like at the moment it's not even going to be in the 20, what are we now, 2024, 2028, the 2032 Olympics. So it looks like they, uh, people didn't like it enough for it to be in the Olympics. I think this performance of her possibly weighed in factor to it. I saw a lot of people saying that, <coughs> you know, Olympic golds don't come evenly you look at some of the track and field athletes who work their lives they build their bodies up and then you compare it to another sport that's not so physically you know physically demanding like track and field and they still get the same gold it's a little bit like oh yeah yeah the more sports you get the more you actually dilute an olympic gold i think a little bit so not great that there's going to be no more break dancing what is she going to do next time i wonder we're going to get no more viral memes of her poorly break dancing so we'll see not the best for the olympics but good job japan coming third and great britain not bad not bad 65 65 medals is more better than i could have done well done to everyone who got a medal there 14 golds i feel like we could have got ah, just a little bit more just a little bit more but especially when you factor in that russia aren't even in this so maybe we would have actually come eighth if they didn't do russia normally do quite well in the olympics and next news story coming up for you is, oh yes, oh yes, this, this is a big news story going around that you might not have seen. This is kind of crazy. Uh, a Japanese employee of Aeon, which is like a huge supermarket chain in Japan, believe it or not, we actually have one of these on my island. Surprise, surprise, one of the few things we actually have here. Um, they have some of these stores in Myanmar. And at the moment, Myanmar have some very, very strict laws at the moment because of the government's pol politics there. There's it going through just a mess of like war, military regime, it's a nightmare. And a Japanese person working for Aeon in Japan was almost going to have to stay in prison for one year. So he got convicted of selling rice for, for too high, that's right. His punishment for one year in prison was selling rice too high. The government have made strict restrictions out there at the price that you can sell rice and Aeon was selling it for higher than that. They arrested the man, they convicted him and luckily the Japanese government have somehow managed to get him out of prison early and he's now just got back to Japan. But if you go to Myanmar, be careful at the moment because the getting arrested for selling rice too expensive is crazy, 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 crazy. Especially for someone that isn't a national of the country. When I saw this news story, I couldn't believe it. When I first saw it yesterday, he had just been convicted and luckily the Japanese government managed to broker some sort of deal to get him out early. So glad he's back in Japan and not having to do a year in Myanmar prison. But that is, that is just terrible, isn't it? You, you sell something for too expensive and you get to go to prison? Jesus, I tell you what, every single store here in Toshima would have to get 
would have to be arrested for a year because sometimes the price of fruit here, oh my God, it's ludicrous. The Myanmar people saw the price of fruit. Oh, everyone would be getting arrested. Every single person in Aeon. Oh, 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 no, thank you. No, thank you. Maybe it's be, maybe it'd be good. Maybe the price of fruit would go down. I don't know. So I think that is almost all of our news stories for today. Oh, actually, no, we've got one more news story coming for you. Um, more people are coming to Japan. And because of this, we're getting more and more foreign born children. And because of this, we're getting less children who speak Japanese. <laughs> we certainly are. So the Japanese government have just put out a big news story that students are in need of Japanese language support is on the rise compared to last year. So this year it said language support hit an all time high around 69,000. Nice number, very, very round. Um, so off the six, uh, I swear this number is made up, 69,123 students needed extra language supports. Not all of these, by the way, were foreign nationals. Some of these held Japanese nationality. Around 11,000 were actually Japanese nationals who needed extra language support and the rest of the 57,000 were all foreign nationals. And it's very good to see that the Japanese government is uh, helping people with the Japanese language support because Japanese is a very, very difficult language to learn. Free alphabet systems, one of the hardest in the world. And it's great to see the government are doing, uh, helping people learn this. But surprise, surprise, it wasn't English speakers like me who I thought would be the, have the most problems of it. Oh, no, no, no. It's actually uh, Chinese native speakers are having the most problems with it. With students of 13,000 native speakers struggling. And then the next is people of Portuguese speakers. So that's 12,000. And then after that, it was Filipino uh, people with 11,000 people. So I, I thought if, if I had to put money on this, what countries are struggling with Japanese the most, I'd have hand down put it on native English speakers. But no, we are not in the top three. So well done us. Looks like we are doing very well on learning Japanese. Not me, I'm still struggling every single day. I had my Japanese lesson yesterday and uh, I struggled. I really, really struggled. I will say some of this, not my fault. I uh, was given like a spreadsheet of words to memorize. I did my best to memorize all of them, not perfect by any means, but then I get into the lesson, then they start pulling out words which I've never even heard of before. And I asked, this wasn't on the spreadsheet. And then they go, oh no, you're also meant to do this block of words as well. I was like, ah, oh, I know, well, no one told me this. How, how was I meant to know? It, this is ridiculous. So I had to scramble through a Japanese lesson, not knowing half the words and just kind of guessing what they mean. Pretty much like my normal day here in Japan. So that is pretty much it for the Japanese news stories for you today. It certainly is. Um, then just what's been going on with me. I recently went to a trip to Tokyo, had a very nice time, got to see my family who I haven't seen in the last two years. I have to say, um, the trip wasn't as good as last times I've been to Tokyo. Really, really weird. The service I have found everywhere just seems to have gone down and down and down. Like I said earlier, when I'm going to restaurants now, I now have good Jap or good enough Japanese that I can order food, I can speak to the waitress, and that's half the reason of going out to a Japanese restaurant for me is to get the culture, get to speak to people. And it's really difficult to, because every single restaurant I go to, we're just given a tablet and then we ordered on there. And it's kind of lifeless. It takes the fun away of a restaurant, you know, that I can stay at home and order food on a tablet and have it come to me. That's pretty much Deliveroo. And then I'm paying extra for it. So I didn't like that. The hotels that I stayed in, the service there has gone way, 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 way down. There's one hotel that I went to that um, they doing no cleaning of the rooms for three days. And if I wanted extra towels, I had to bring them down to the front desk. But guess what? The front desk was only open from like two to three. The hours on it were crazy. It was like 9 a.m. to 9 a.m. to like 3 p.m. And when are you in the room then? If you're traveling around, you're not. So yeah, really didn't like that hotel. Other hotels I stayed in also service is just getting down and down and down. Uh, first time I've ever seen it in Japan. A couple of people actually, a couple of servers actually rude to, um, rude to the people, their customers, which is a big, big surprise. I was in Don Quixote and um, 
I was on one of the second floors that didn't have a cash register, but they had like a little kiosk where people could ask for stuff. And this man just went over and asked, oh, can I pay here? And the way the woman talked to him behind the desk was so rude. So, so rude. If that was me as a customer, I'd have just left everything that I had and just walked out. I It's the first time I've seen someone genuinely rude in Japan to a customer. I couldn't believe it. I went to a restaurant in one place and we had a problem with the uh, bill that led to a sort of an argument with the wait waiter and me and he was also rude and we almost just went you know what here's here's what we think it should be and then walked out because he was also rude just japan and tokyo i don't know what it is at the moment just getting rude getting rude and i don't know why the service is getting rude it's getting more expensive and uh, I don't like it. Not a fan, not a fan. But coming back to the island, everyone's great. I went to uh, places outside of Tokyo, went to Yokohama, people there were really good. So I don't know what it is about Tokyo at the moment. Everyone's just a little bit, a little bit grumpy, a little bit rude, and I, I didn't like it. So if you come to Japan, maybe go outside of Tokyo if you can. And don't go, you know, everyone goes to the, I feel like it's the main, these main places everyone goes on a trip. They go to Tokyo, they go to Kyoto, they go to Osaka, and that's, they might go to a few places, maybe go to Fukuoka, Nagasaki, Hiroshima. Try and get outside of the cities more. Go, go on the outskirts, because that's where the real people live, and that's the real Japan, and it's getting much better. But also, funnily enough, uh, and I'll link this video in the description, if I have it, I hopefully have it, because my computer crashed. Yes, I, I think I've got it. Um, a sort of guy who's really into video games, old classic video games, get, um, we're talking like the game, game Boy, original Game Boy, Sega stuff, consoles which I've never even heard of. He went to Japan and he was looking for deals on these video games and he was actually going that like Akihabara now is not cheap compared to what it used to be because so much tourists are going there. They've whacked the price up to ridiculous amounts and then this guy was also traveling all around Japan and he was finding, actually, if you go outside of Akihabara and Tokyo, you can get much, much better deals. They had sort of Game Boys in Akihabara for two, three hundred dollars and outside of Akihabara, he was finding them for like 50, 60 dollars, much, much cheaper. So I feel like Japan has become, or Tokyo at least, a little bit of a tourist trap where they don't like the tourists there. They're just trying to get as much money out of you as possible. And the service has just gone all the way down, all the way down. And that, that's sad for me to hear because every other time that I've been to Tokyo, I've had a fantastic time. And this time, not so much. I will say this time I did go in the summer season. It is so hot in Tokyo. Maybe that's why people are a little grump, bit grumpy because it's just too hot, but yeah. Not not good, Japan. Not good. Not not a fan. Not a fan at all. Especially when there is other places where tourists can go and it's a little bit cheaper, quite frankly. Um, if you're living in Tsushima, I go to Korea all the time and Busan is significantly cheaper than going over to Tokyo. And Busan, there are a lot of great benefits to Busan. So yeah, if you've been to Japan, maybe go check out Busan for a week and see, see what you like. Go to both. They're great countries, different experiences. I will say uh, Busan, I would say, better for drinking, better for going out drinking, less cover charges. You can just go sit in a bar, have a drink, have one or two, and then you can go to another bar, much better for bar hopping. Uh, Tokyo, not particularly good for bar hopping. You've got to pay cover charges, snack charges, and that is a little bit annoying. I've noticed a lot of people when I was there complaining about the snack charges. So there we go. But that is our video for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you had an absolutely fantastic day. The podcast now should be getting back to a regu regular schedule. I have moved house. This is actually the new studio. You might not be able to tell because it's the same background, same lights. But that's it. We moved and I got a little bit sick. I'm healthy now. So back to normal videos. Thanks for very much for watching. Have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And I will see you again on Friday. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.